When it comes to the role of your eyes in the game of tennis, we have to differentiate between ball tracking and ball recognition. So ball tracking is your ability to track the ball as it's coming to you. On the other hand, ball recognition is your ability to read the incoming ball. For example, being able to read underspin, topspin, or the penetration of the incoming ball early is gonna be of a great advantage. But in today's video, I don't wanna discuss ball recognition. I want to discuss ball tracking. But more specifically, I want to discuss how ball tracking is correlated to your biomechanics. Now, unfortunately, they don't go hand in hand. Your biomechanics are gonna be counterintuitive to your ability to track the ball. So let me explain to you why that is the case. If I'm standing on the baseline and tracking the ball that's coming at me, naturally, the most comfortable way to track the ball is going to be open with my head positioned towards the incoming ball. Now, if you play tennis this way, your biomechanics are gonna suffer because as soon as you determine where the ball is going, you wanna turn to the specific side you wanna hit from. So let's take the forehand as an example. When I see the ball is coming to my forehand, I'm gonna make a turn, and now my head needs to turn over my shoulder in order to track the ball. The same is true for all your backhands, whether we're talking about a one-handed backhand, two-handed backhand, or a one-handed backhand slice, your head is gonna be positioned over your shoulder while you're tracking the ball. Now to make things worse, we're not gonna stop there. We're gonna load the strokes even further. So for example, on the backhands, what you will see that this is not a sufficient turn. Independent of what type of backhand you're attempting, you wanna actually turn your back towards the other side so that you'll have to turn your head even more over your shoulder to be able to track the ball properly. On the forehand, some players are going to continue to turn even more making ball tracking more difficult because the head will need to go over the non-dominant shoulder as the players are tracking the ball. Now, why do you want to turn in this way? Why not just play tennis like this and have the ability to comfortably track the ball? Because you're going to miss out on the most important element of all ground strokes, which is torso rotation. If you don't turn and play the ball like this, you're going to be causing great harm to your tennis development and you're going to have an impossible time advancing at the recreational levels and have an impossible time to play tennis at the higher levels. So in other words, the loading of the body and the torso rotation are fundamental elements that all high level players have in common. Now here are the good news. In your setup process, you're not gonna set your body up so that the ball is right in your body. You're gonna have the ball to the side of your body because that's where contact will be established. And that makes ball tracking a little bit easier. So let's go through each individual stroke and I'll explain to you how ball tracking is correlated to the biomechanics of each individual stroke. So on the forehand you do need to turn and you're going to be tracking the ball with your chin over your shoulder. Now the ball is going to be coming at you, you might still be setting up the shot and as you initiate your stroke now you're going to continue to track the ball which is going to be coming closer to your right side if you happen to be right handed and the position of your head is going to become more comfortable. So in other words, as the ball gets closer to you, you obviously don't have to look at it like this anymore. It's going to get more comfortable to track the ball properly. And on the forehand, you have to understand that this is a stroke that has a contact point that's unique. So all players at the high level, without any exception, will make contact in front. So in other words, the dominant shoulder will be at least at the level of the non-dominant shoulder, but in most cases it will be ahead. And now you will see something interesting at the elite level and at the high level. Some players will keep their head towards the contact point while other players will have their head pointing forward. Now you ask yourself, why would that be the case? Novak Djokovic, for example, who's breaking all the records in the tennis world, doesn't keep his head at the ball. His head is forward when he makes contact with the forehand. How can that be possible? Well, you have to understand the context of the fastest part of the forehand, which takes place in sheer milliseconds. And players are hitting the forehand 80 to 100 miles an hour. So it is absolutely impossible to see the ball. Even if you tried, you wouldn't be able to see the ball touching your strings. So the fact that some players keep their head down at the moment of contact, it's not 
to be able to see the ball. This is a stylistic element of the forehand. It's not wrong by any means. Roger Federer, Carlos Alcaraz keep their head down when contact is established, but the vast majority of players at the elite level has their head forward when contact is established on the forehand. Now the reason why most players have their head pointing forward at the moment of contact is that the forehand contact point is different from any other shot in tennis. It's hit way out front. So it's actually counterintuitive to keep your head down. So it's not wrong by any means if you observe that your head is down at the moment of contact. I happen to hit the forehand like this as well. This is not wrong. But it's also not wrong if your head is forward. Now how about popping the head up too early? Now you're going to get in trouble because remember you have to track the ball as long as possible. But not only that, the head needs to match your torso rotation. So as you're rotating into your forehand, the head can simply match this movement and rotate forward in this way. Again, if you have a style where the head is turned towards the contact, this is not wrong by any means. Now, on the backhand side, the contact is completely different. Whether we're talking about a slice backhand, a one-handed backhand, or a two-handed backhand, our chest is going to be towards the side fence. The two-handed backhand has a little bit more torso rotation than the one-handed slice and the regular one-handed backhand, but still the chest is more towards the side fence. And you're going to see all high-level players keep their head down when they make contact with the ball. You're not going to see a player have their head forward on any backhand. This makes absolutely no sense when we think about the biomechanics that are performed on the backhand side. So again, you take any backhand, you're going to make a turn as big as possible. You're going to put your chin over your shoulder and this turn is crucial so you can get as much torso rotation as possible into the contact. And now as you're rotating, your head is going to be tracking the ball and as the ball gets closer to you, this tracking is going to be more comfortable because you are rotating and the ball is getting closer to you. And then when you make contact, naturally the head is going to be in a straight position. Why? Because the body is still turned towards the side. How about the volley? Well, here we don't have to worry about rotation. The volley is a deflective shot and the chest is going to be positioned slightly sideways, ideally. And because of this sideways position of the chest, it's going to be natural to keep the head positioned towards the string bed at the moment of contact, both for the forehand and for the backhand volley. Now, how about the serve? For here, we don't have to worry about ball tracking so much. Why? Because when you toss the ball to yourself, the ball is flying up at a very low speed. So the ball is extremely easy to track. Now, how about the contact point? Here's where things get very interesting. Just like the forehand, the backhand, the contact is over in milliseconds. And remember, the serve is the fastest stroke in tennis. So it is absolutely impossible to see the ball touch the string bed at the moment of contact. So here's what you will observe at the high level and at the elite level. When we're talking about a kick serve, we know that contact is established right above the head and players therefore don't look at the ball when they perform a kick serve. They will be tracking the ball as long as possible but as that racket starts approaching the ball forward the head straightens out. Think of it this way. You will not be able to transfer your weight forward if you are trying to look at the ball on your kick serve with a contact that's established right over your head. This will cause an imbalance in your body making the forward weight transfer very difficult. So you take any kick serve at the high level, at the elite level, you're not going to see a single player look at the ball when they hit a kick. All players look forward. How can they do that? You got to remember that contact is established in milliseconds just like any other shot and you don't necessarily need to look at the ball when you make contact. Of course you have to track it as long as you possibly can but you cannot see the contact with the ball Anyways, now how about the flat and the slice serve? Here the contact is going to be established in front of our head. So just like the kick serve, the head will not be positioned like this. Looking up, it will straighten out so that the weight transfer can be performed. But because the contact is established in front of the head, it's theoretically possible to see the contact. But remember, the contact cannot be observed in real time. If you play close attention to elite level players and you take still images of them right when they make contact with the ball on a flat and a slice serve or even on a kick serve you'll see that some players actually have their eyes closed. This is also true for the forehand by the way. Some players like Dominic Thiem have their eyes closed when they make contact with the ball. Now how about stances? Will different stances make ball tracking easier? There's absolutely no correlation between 
your closed stance or your open stance and your ball tracking. Why do I say that? Because regardless of what stance you perform your shots with, you have to keep your biomechanics fundamentally sound. So it's not a case that if I hit a semi-open stance forehand that I'm gonna be more open. No, I'm gonna turn the exact same way whether I'm doing a semi-open stance forehand or a closed stance forehand. I'm still going to have to track the ball with my chin over my shoulder. This is true for the forehand and all backhands. Whether I'm doing closed stance or semi-open stance or completely open stance, I still have to turn my torso. Why? Because torso rotation is one of the most important fundamentals that you need to possess on all ground strokes. Now, thankfully, human beings have peripheral vision, which makes ball tracking quite easy. Now, the one difficulty that some recreational players might experience is having the ability to turn their head over their shoulder. I have had some students who have neck injuries and they simply can't turn their head over their shoulder like high-level players do. So in that case, you're going to have to sacrifice your biomechanics and you're going to have to turn less to be able to comfortably position your neck. So that's the only caveat to this, is that some players have physical limitations that prevent them from loading their shots properly. Now I mentioned peripheral vision. Now let's put it to the test. Let's assume a player has a weakness in one eye. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put a patch over my right eye so I can't see anything out of my right eye. I only have my left eye. So let's start off with the back end and see if I can keep my fundamentals intact. In other words, I'm going to try to coil as much as I can and load my body the right way. However, I can't see my right eye and let's see if that has an effect on my backhand. So I'm going to turn as much as I can. There's no problem with ball tracking. I can see the ball perfectly and I'm turning my normal amount that you can see I'm able to rally without any problems. Let me try a one-handed backhand and again I'm going to turn as much as I can and again you see no issues with ball tracking whatsoever. Of course it's a little bit uncomfortable to play with one eye, I'm not going to lie, but I'm turning as much as I can and I can see the ball just fine. Okay, let's try a two-handed backhand and see if there's any differences there. Again, absolutely no problem tracking the ball, making contact with it. Again, the peripheral vision in my left eye is allowing me to track the ball just fine. All right, guys, now I got the patch on my left eye and let's see if I can make contact with the forehand. Again, I'm gonna to try to turn as much as I can. Let's see what happens. Again, no problem at all tracking the ball. My peripheral vision is allowing me to see the ball perfectly. Ah! Almost lost my shoe. No problem. And again, I'm turning and no issues with striking the ball. And while we're at it, let's test the serve. Now, my left eye is patched up. Let's see what happens. Okay, no problem with tracking the ball and making contact. And let's patch up the other eye and see if there's any difference. Again, absolutely no problem whatsoever tracking the ball and making contact with it. So guys, ball tracking is incredibly important. Without ball tracking, you will not be able to play tennis. However, do not jeopardize the fundamental biomechanical elements on your ground strokes, which is your loading position. You take a look at any player that's good at tennis. What you're gonna observe, exactly what I demonstrated in today's video. All players do it the same. You will not find the player not turn on their forehand or on their back and except when they're in emergency situations without any time. But in 99% of the cases, players are loading their body. Why? Because the torso rotation is a fundamental element of the ground strokes that you have to learn and utilize if you want to advance in the game of tennis. I just wanted to prove that when you have an eye patch over the eye that's closer to the ball, you still have enough peripheral vision in your other eye to set up the stroke properly and keep your fundamentals intact. Some of you guys are going to see this as a training method. Do not go out there and practice with an eye patch. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that tracking the ball with one eye is better than tracking it with two eyes. Of course, when you track the ball with two eyes, it's going to be more comfortable and it's going to be a lot 
easier. I have no idea if there's any benefits to playing tennis with one eye or if it's harmful. I'm just telling you to not do it. Also, if you do to unfortunate circumstances only have one eye you can still play tennis and track the ball properly while keeping your fundamentals in place that is the good news so i just wanted to say this and i will see you guys in the next video